Hello everybody, it's me, your friendly neighborhood, and uh, I've been uh, pretty absent for the past month. I know, I know, I promised I'd have some videos out, but, uh, you know, school's been kind of kicking my ass lately. So, um, I decided that, you know what, instead of letting you guys wait on a new video, I decided to, like, comprise all three of my Spider-Man mobile retrospective videos into one big movie. So, if you don't want to go back and watch them, you can watch them all here in one sitting so uh i know this is kind of a bit of a palate cleanser appetizer if you will i am still working on videos and this is also going to be nice for anybody who hasn't seen the series and they can watch all of them in one sitting so anyway i hope you guys enjoy so i was playing a few of my favorite mobile games and i realized i've never seen a real in-depth review of these titles the reason for that is because sadly nobody cares about the mobile gaming market and as a result nobody takes it seriously just like the really outdated ideology that women should go back in the kitchen i tell anybody who says that playing a mobile game doesn't count as being on the same level as a console or pc game that they can go step on a fucking lego that being said i decided to do something new on this channel because there's totally not enough shit that I do on this channel already. Let's talk about the untouched gold mine that are the mobile Spider-Man games. Since technology has been getting progressively better, as well as mobile games becoming more and more a viable market, it was only a matter of time before the webslinger himself got a few of his own outings on the touchscreen. And boy, did he get a really short-lived lifespan of solo outings. I'll be reviewing all three of them. Ultimate Spider-Man, Total Mayhem, The Amazing Spider-Man Mobile, and uh, it's fucking sequel. This idea was brought on by our user games making a bare bones version of the PS4 Spider-Man game that, as far as I remember, is no longer receiving updates for some reason. It made me realize that maybe if I do this, more developers will decide to actually make a mobile Spider-Man game that's actually good and isn't lazy. And the Buddha Reckoned! What about Toxic City? Well, for starters, Toxic City is a side-scroller version of Total Mayhem. Plus, I can't find a reliable APK file for it. But Arachnid! What about Unlimited? A lot of people are probably going to dislike this video for me saying this, but I don't like Unlimited that much. It's just a Temple Runner Subway Circuit knockoff with a bunch of Spider-Man costumes thrown into the mix. There's really nothing that interesting about it. Yeah, the story for the game is basically the Spider-Verse, but I'd rather have that in the style of the games that I'm about to take a look at. Oh, by the way, they've also done the same thing. The same year that came out in Spider-Man Ultimate Power. A side-scroller runner. I will give it credit though, it's a nice time waster. The models and textures are pretty good and the voice work is really solid. I wish they put more effort into making a regular Spider-Man game instead of a gimmick runner. Something that I've been seeing pop up a lot lately with Crash Bandicoot, Mario, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, at least it makes sense in Sonic's case. But anyways, let's get into the swing of things with Ultimate Spider-Man Total Mayhem. Total Mayhem was a 2010 action-adventure mobile game for the iOS and Android platforms. Sadly though, it's no longer available for purchase on either app stores, but I'll talk about that more later. It takes place somewhere in the Ultimate Comic Universe, no, not the cartoon, as implied by the style of Electro and Green Goblin being in their Ultimate designs, though the game itself doesn't really take place within the comic's continuity. It's just a linear beat-em-up that's split into chapters, each having their own villain boss, where you get stuck in a room full of thugs, kick their asses, rinse or repeat, leading up to the aforementioned boss battle. The story itself is that the city is in... Well, total mayhem. Roll credits. As various villains from Spider-Man's rogues gallery have escaped the Triskelion, a shield prison. Due to an explosion, the main villains are Sandman, Rhino, Electro, Doc Ock, Venom, and the final boss himself being the Green Goblin. The Lizard has a mention in the game, but he's actually helping create an antidote for something that happens later in the game. Now that I mention it, uh, let's get into the story. Hey, uh, I want to point out that the audio for the game recordings may be a bit scuffed due to some dumb shit at Google thinking it was a great idea to remove the ability to record internal audio for all Android games. So sadly, I had to make sure I was in a quiet area and record using my external microphone as an audio source. I'm just saying that in case you hear me breathing in the background or something, but it might be edited out. You're probably wondering why I don't use my computer as a mirroring source. Um, 
and I tried that. The results, uh, the fucking audio got desynced because who would have guessed mirroring would cause my network to have an aneurysm and make the mirror lack to all hell. It also doesn't help that my laptop is a friggin' dinosaur. I appreciate my cello fellow church members for donating this to me, but if I actually had, was forced to use this for college, I would have failed due to the lack of sufficient hardware. And for some reason, the LEDs on the screen are murder to my retinas. It also has to constantly stay plugged up, up or else it will start having withdrawals like my girlfriend when she doesn't have her cigarettes every three hours. Even editing is a pain in my ass because something about the screen's lighting makes me physically recoil at the sight of it. But hey, if you want to help me get a higher-end PC, links to donate are down below where you can donate. Here's a reminder, donating is very much optional since the content you consume is free. Therefore, you have no obligation to give me your hard-earned money. It's just something optional for you guys to do if you're feeling generous since YouTube doesn't pay me diddly squat yet. The story starts off with Spidey swinging around, noting that an explosion is taking out the Juskelion. He stylishly takes out three thugs that are going to cost some poor woman, and gets reminded about how New Yorkers are extremely ungrateful assholes. Freak! No, really, I've never heard that before. After taking care of a few roughhousers, Spidey nearly ends up in an obituaries, thanks to a careless fire truck chauffeuring the Sandman. Huh? and he realizes this may be a long day for him. This begins your adventure. There really isn't much to say about the story given that there are no deep players. <laughs> given the fact that this is a one-off mobile title that honestly is reminiscent of the 2000 Spider-Man game of the good old days. Each area is split up into 12 chapters and each chapter showcases different parts of the city. From the chaos of Midtown streets to the underbelly of the subway infested with symbiotes. Oh, right. Um, the story gets so hectic that a plot of the city being taken over by symbiotes has been shoved in there. Wait a minute. Spider sense tingling. Now what? Spidey, whoever's behind all this, got symbiotes. Funny enough, these symbiotes aren't directly controlled by Venom. As a matter of fact, they're actually hurting the guy. But somehow he gets into his thick skull that sp it's Spider Man's fault, and, well. The real culprit behind this is the Green Goblin himself. You find him in a big stadium. After that, Spidey chills and gets found by that woman from earlier that wants to know that Spider D because she remembered, oh yeah, the guy I called a freak earlier just saved my life and just saved all the city. I should go thank him. And then they swung off, hopefully, to never show up in a Tracy Scops comic. Listen, if you know, you know. So the story, as I mentioned before, is pretty lackluster. It's a simple formula of save the city and it's Spider-Man against the world with no real outside help from other superheroes or law enforcement. Oh, what is the gameplay, you ask? Well... Gameplay is fairly simple for your basic standard beat-em-up mobile game. You got your basic combat button where you do simple combos, a simple jump button for platforming and air attacks, as well as a web button where you can factor into combos. Personally, my favorite aerial attack is the little web strike he does where he kicks the enemy twice. I don't know why, just something about that animation is cool as fuck. There's also a dedicated prompt for when you're about to be attacked by an enemy, and you can dodge and counter. I believe this is honestly perfectly executed here, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, you probably realized I haven't mentioned anything about web swinging, even though this is a Spider-Man game. Well, since this is a linear Spider-Man game with no real open world to speak of, web swinging kinda took a back seat in this game. You technically can web swing, but it's more like a double jump. You can't swing consecutively, which kinda reminds me of how they did the exact same thing in Friend or Foe, and by extension, Superhero Squad Online. Which is kinda disappointing that you'll be running around the entire fucking game with this few scripted wall crawling segments and pole slides. But they did add in a few scripted web swing segments that somewhat make up for the fact that they handicapped Spider-Man. But it, even then, that has its own issues. It does the exact same swing pose every time you do it, and I wish they just put a little more time and effort into it and made different swinging animations that randomly happen when these segments pop up. Variety is key, you know. It also doesn't help that the web line for these is a poorly rendered flat texture that stands out like a sore thumb every time it comes out. Here's hoping there's a mod to fix that. Oh, there's also quick time events in this game. Yeah, we all love quick time events in a Spider-Man game, don't we? I'm going to die! But at least the instances in this game aren't so bad. 
You could say the Spider Sense button counts as a QTE since it's not the game's original layout, but I'm gonna be a cynical asshole about it and say it doesn't count. Sometimes a cutscene will play and you get a quick time event to dodge something, and if you fail, the scene still plays out basically the same, but instead of dodging and doing something cool, you just eat shit. You also get QTEs on a few symbiote and goblin enemies that jump on your back like a jockey from Left 4 Dead 2, and since there's no teammate to shoot the bastard off you, you have to get them off yourself by mashing a special QTE button. I think the only boss battles that legitimately uses QTEs are the Venom boss battles, and that's only when he lunges at you to fillet you like a salmon. You also have a QTE where if you slip off a platform into the Spider-Man movie game abyss, you can actually save yourself. Swiping up will have Spider-Man shoot a web line straight into the high heavens, places him back into the starting platform. Missing will result in pulling a Montero and Satan putting you back on the expense of taking some health. Thanks, Satan. Uh, it's Satine, actually. Got it. And you also have a special attack if your web meter fills up all the way, you can unleash yourself like a Ninjago Spinjitsu Warrior and clean house. I will point out that the biggest downside is that dodging also uses the web meter. So fuck you, I guess. Also, if you use a special attack, it completely drains your web meter, and you can't do any web attacks or dodging until it fills up again. So fuck you in that regard as well. So gameplay-wise, for a mobile beat-em-up title, it's actually pretty solid. They probably had to work around a few things with the technology of the time, and had to find substitutes for things. And I think they did a pretty good job. The only complaint I have is with the action prompt. When you reach an object you have to interact with, you have to press the exclamation button that pops up over it. Uh, small problem with that, it's over the object itself instead of being down where the controls in my hand are. Meaning, any time an action prompt like this pops up, I have to rake my hand across the phone screen in order to reach it. That is extremely inconvenient, and I don't like that. Also, sometimes when Spider-Man dodges over bigger enemies, he sometimes won't dodge all the way, and, and I'll still end up getting hit with a face full at the business end of the nigga with a rocket launcher. As I pointed out before, you have to track down all of Spider-Man's greatest foes in order to complete the story mode. In order, they are Sandman, Rhino, Electro, Venom, Doc Ock, and finally, the Green Goblin. Six villains, huh? <laughs> well, I guess you could say in a sort of ways they're the ultimate Sinister Six. Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. The ultimate six. But um, Venom was never part of that. Uh, Craven, however, was, uh, as well as Vulture. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't Norman kill Doc Ock in the comics? That must have been a really awkward reunion. Now if we escape the Triskelion, I've gathered you here today because we must trust the Spider-Man. Any suggestions? Why don't we just... All do enough damage to draw out the web and then kill him. Rhino, you've had some pretty stupid ideas, but this one's a doozy. He's got a point for once. We can call it a lot of chaos and draw him out. But why are we here? We do not even need the spider. We just want him to bear what he did to us. Apologies for my lightness. The shield guards are a nuisance to deal with. You! But yeah, you have to fight your way through a variety of levels till you get to the bosses themselves. Personally, my favorite boss battle is Venom. Because I'm a slut for Venom. And I think I speak for everyone uh, when I say the worst boss battle is the fucking Rhino. I don't know why, but he was the most difficult boss battle of the game. He's literally the second fucking boss battle, and it felt like I was playing the mobile equivalent of Dark Souls. What the fuck? His regular attacks can be telegraphed and countered. But it's his fucking charge that gives me the most aids. Now, the rule of thumb is that every Spider-Man game that uses Rhino as a boss battle, you gotta lead him into ramming his horn into the wall or something hard, either making him dazed or stuck, and you have to wail on him in the window of opportunity to get the maximum amount of damage out of him. But in this game, his charge attack is fucking asinine. Yeah, you get prompted to dodge, but he comes in so fast, you'd have better odds moving out of the way yourself. And even when it connects to the wall, it takes a second for the game to register the collision. So for a few seconds, you'll be standing like a bumbling moron, waiting for the stun animation to activate. Oh, did I forget to mention this boss HAS THREE PHASES?! The first phase starts in the bank, the second phase takes you to the roof, and the third phase takes you back to the streets, in which each phase, he's given a consecutive charge. Which means, phase one, he charges you only once until he hits a wall. The second time, he charges you once, and if you move out of the way and he hits something, he will quick turn and charge you again! Phase three, I think you get 
the message by now! The consecutive charges always catch me off guard because if you get hit with the first charge in the second and third phases, you will get hit with the second and third charge as well! Brilliant fucking design! The boss battle with Sandman was the easiest and honestly, you, you don't even have to activate the water mains to beat him. Just keep beating his ass until he dies. Great, now I have sand in my shorts. Electro, Doc Ock, and Goblin's well done. You just have to wait until they finish their attacks. And then they just stand there, catching their breath, leaving themselves open for you to kick their shit in. As for the basic jobber enemies that you face off against in the game, you start off with your common street thug from your basic bitches that want to slug your head like it's a foul ball, to the assholes that like to throw explosive bottles. I refuse to call them Molotov cocktails because Molotovs don't fucking work like that! What the fuck? Moving on through the city, the enemies start getting a lot more freaky. What the heck are they running away from? Oh my god! Guess the security robots must have missed those whatever they are. These symbiote zombies can vary in the ways they can fuck you up. The male symbiotes can summon tendrils that can put you in a specific genre of hentai that will never understand why people like, and the female symbiotes can perform a scorpion on you. GET OVER HERE! <laughs> There's also another symbiote that shoots goo balls at you. Yeah, fuck those guys. The heavy enemies this time around are these robots that are supposed to be cleaning up the symbiotes, but for some reason, they've got a hard-on for trying to kill Spider-Man above anything else. Like, seriously, they don't even fight any of the enemies. They just go straight for you. I guess they didn't have time to code them attacking the symbiotes. I don't know. Moving on, the last enemy type you have to deal with are the goblins. And fighting these gives me a perspective of why the Goblin Slayer hates them so much. Wait, there's something here. Frick you, oh, Goblin you. Slayer! I'm the boat! How, you are you, how are you still alive? I killed you like. You and me can rule this Shut game, up. Goblin Slayer, or we can just fight to the death. I swear to the good lord, I am going to murder you so hard. These fuckers are annoying and un predictable. With their basic attacks, they can also randomly jump on your back like a fucking jockey and strangle you. And instead of having a buddy shoot it off your back, you have to do it yourself. They can also throw pumpkin bombs, and if you're not paying attention, you can land right on them in the middle of a dodge. And if you take down enough of their health, they will pull a massive final fuck you by pulling out a massive fucking pumpkin bomb and trying to take you to hell with them. There are plenty of times I didn't know how to react to that shit, and I got hit with a- These bastards are the most annoying enemies I've ever had to deal with in this game. Environments also play a minor role in the game, whether it be the city streets that have abandoned cars that make me half expect zombies to show up at one point, to the symbiote infested downtown that makes the environment a literal hazard to traverse through. Uh, let me put it into perspective by comparing the wall crawl segments of both environments. The burning buildings are the first levels uh, just on fire. But the fires are pretty easy to avoid. There are scripted objects to fall on you, but once again, those are easy to avoid. The crawl segments on the symbiote infested levels are literal fucking cancer. The hitbox is so wonky, you can accidentally walk into a patch and get hit without realizing it. And let's not forget about the tendrils that randomly come out of the wall. They're always unavoidable because they don't have an indicator of when they're coming, unlike the floor tendrils that want my ass. Also, the hitboxes for those are wonky too. Sometimes they'll go back into the ground, but if you walk over them during a certain point of their despawn animation, you still take damage! Fucking why?! The electricity plant is also a headache to go through because there are so many areas you can fall off by accident if you miss jump by a millimeter. And it doesn't help the fact that the fucking platforms can electrocute you. The camera also doesn't do you any favors at times because it will position itself right over Spider-Man's head during platforming segments. The city streets leading to the Goblin aren't horrible, mind you. It's just that uh, the, the traversal elements, yeah, they can go to hell. These rail slide segments show up often in these levels, and let me tell you the reason why they control horribly here. There are so many times I've slipped off the edge because of a misinput or took damage from an environmental hazard because for some fucking reason, Spidey refused to jump. Best example of this uh, is during the final stretches of Trouble in the Bronx missions where a bridge is collapsing and you have to jump around to avoid falling into the abyss while running to the end. There was one part in the middle of the bridge that gave me so many issues because I kept falling. I can't even think of the life of me why that I had so many issues on that part. It just happened over and over and over again. But anyway, let's get, let's move on to the- 
Uh, the sound design for this game is a hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh? What the fuck was that? The better sound effects stand out to me, or mainly the web sounds. It just basically sounds like it came out of Spider-Man 2's own sound vault. The impact for attacks are pretty satisfying, and the music reminds me of the old Sam Raimi Spider-Man track. Also, I I'm not sure if it's the game showing its age, or just the fact that it's the APK version of the game, but I feel like there are some audio cues missing. Like when Spider-Man kicks Venom, there's supposed to be an impact sound when he initially hits the ground, but it's awkwardly silent. And the voice actor is pretty good too. Andrew Chaikin as the voice of Spider-Man does a pretty serviceable job playing the webhead, and funny enough, he's the only voice actor that's credited in the fucking game. Like, look, I know he's the lead role, but come on, everybody else did a pretty serviceable job too, even if you can tell that they're obviously using a voice changer. I'm looking at you, Goblin! They're the ones that bother me the most when they open their pixelated mouths or the regular enemies. Most notably, the street thugs. Most of their lines don't even sound like they're trying to go to teenage super into fighting them. It just sounds more like they're trying to convince a prepubescent girl to get in the back of their van with the prospect of giving them free candy. Come play with us! Come play with me! Get over here, you little spider! Moving pretty quick there, why don't you have a seat right over there? What the fuck is this? How to Catch a Predator Spider-Man Edition? Could they not think of better voice lines for thugs to say? Here, I just thought of three better lines for the thugs right here. It's the spider! Get him! Eat lead, webhead! Circus in town? Sorry, I don't know how the last one got in there. Uh, anyway, let's get to the- The game was released back in 2010, and... I- I can't sugarcoat this. The game aged like the initial announcement for Half-Life Episode 3. What I'm trying to say is, this game's graphics are absolute dog shit. If you haven't been paying attention to the footage too closely, a few of the textures and the character models have been changed because the base model textures are, uh... You think this is funny? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. Well, Mr. Funny Man, is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! It also doesn't help that the character models look like they're built in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like, seriously, what the fuck is with Spider-Man's chest? Why is it so fucking big? I guess you could say it's... Pretty bizarre. So yeah, I've been using mods to mostly not want to stick forks in my eyes every time I play the game. It's also obvious that Spider-Man has been textured to look like the channel's mascot, Spider-Team. Shout out to Cycle and the Project RE community for making this mod for me. He gave me the base for it and I basically fixed it up in Photoshop to look even better. Sadly, you can't model hair on the model itself. If I get a thousand likes on this video, I'll release the Spider Team mod files. I'll link off to an expanded mod pack for this game made by the Spider Asperger. That includes the APK file for the game since, you know, I'm, as I mentioned before, you can't get this game in the App Store anymore. What can I say? Piracy rules. <laughs> After you beat the game on any difficulty, you unlock the black suit. The black suit? What am I doing in the black suit? I, I hate this thing! And believe it or not, the black suit has a slightly different moveset, and a special ability that lets you stomp the yard, while regular red and blue turns you to a living Beyblade. Please tell me somebody gets the stomp the yard reference. You produce tendrils after a regular combo, and can even turn the tides on the symbiotes by sending them to their own personal hentai hell. You can even unleash spikes on them! You can also max out your spider power and become even stronger using these red orbs that you collect. You can also unlock these neat little comic covers by finding these little books with Spider-Man's face on them. My favorite is the zombie Spider-Man variant cover, that I have no fucking clue how it got past the developers, and I'm pretty sure it scared a few kids upon discovering it. You also have Boss Rush, where you can fight the villains again to try to get the best time for it, as well as being able to go back and play any levels you choose. I think this is really cool, and it adds to the replayability of this game. But enough of that. Let's get to my... This game is a really big step up from those side-scrolling knockoffs Gameloft had released before. And shows they really know what they're doing and have the ability to make a competent game. Though it really does show its age when you look how everything's modeled. But if you can get past that, with the help of a couple of skin mods, you can really dive in and have a blast. This game definitely earns a never soft out of 10. And that's because it reminds me more of the old Spider-Man 2000 game we got on the Dreamcast and PC. Honestly, I'd love to see Neversoft come back and repurpose the game to play on mobile, and I'd buy it. 
Sadly, Game Loft took this game out of their catalog, and personally, I feel like they shouldn't have. They should have kept it up as well as keeping it up with the modern technology. Like I said before, I had to download mine off an APK file, and even then, I think it's optimized for certain screen ratios because it won't go full screen on my phone, and it leaves this ugly black border that was really difficult for me to be okay with. Now, I know some of you diehard Spider-Man fans out there are going to be discouraged by the fact that there's no free roam open world to explore in, but don't you worry, the next two games we'll be covering that in depth. Hi kids, I'm back with the milk. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Spider-Man fan, and Tobey Maguire is my god, but Tobey's movies came out during a time where smartphones weren't really a thing yet. Nah, he got the side-scroller treatment when it came to being on phones. Hell, he even got his own device that was made to play a special port of Spider-Man 3. Though there is a Spider-Man that did show up in movies during a time where smartphones were just becoming more and more essential to everyday life. And that was Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 And if you're wondering, I didn't like the movies. You should kill yourself now! Since this movie came out around the time that tie-in games were still a thing, it received a movie tie-in game that came out on PC, consoles, and handhelds. The PC and console ports fucking sucked. You should kill yourself. I know some review sites are generous to this game, but it, it's just as bad as the movie. The combat may be one of the saving graces, but the story is mediocre at best and just plain fucking awful at worst, with Spider-Man literally being the major cause of why everything happens because he's a massive fucking brainlet. Like, nigga, will you get the fuck back? They are obviously reacting to your cross-species blood. This is quite literally all your fault, you fucking moron! <coughs> what the fuck was that? And to make matters worse, the game has a serious disconnect from the movie's universe that's supposed to be set in. They couldn't even get the rights to the actors' faces or voices for the games. When playing as Peter Mask Off, you don't actually see his face because you're in first person mode the entire time. Gwen looks nothing like Emma Stone. And Smythe doesn't even look close to BJ Novak. I'M NOT TO YOU! But hey, at least Dr. Connors looks somewhat like Reese Evans. But y y you get my point. Now, you may be wondering, Wow, Arachnid, you hate the game with such a passion, then you must hate the mobile port, right? Well... My name is Peter Parker. I can do chemistry in my sleep. Being popular, I feel like I'll never figure it out. One day, everything changed for me. I went from being somebody who was powerless to one of the most powerful people in the entire city. But instead of using that power for good, I was selfish with it. My Uncle Ben always told me that with great power comes great responsibility. Now I've dedicated my life to protecting the defenseless and stopping those who would do them harm. I am the Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man Mobile was released on June 28, 2012, a few days before the movie itself. Just another action beat-em-up title published by Gameloft, who I'm assuming at this point had the licensing rights to making mobile Spider-Man titles. It featured decent combat and a story that loosely followed the movies, but uh, I'll talk more about that later. This game, however, had an ace up its sleeve. It featured an actual open world that you could swing in. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, your eyes do not deceive you. This game has a fully functional web swinging system that you can traverse into on an open world in. But we'll get into more of that in the... Now, make no mistake, this game definitely uses a similar engine as Total Mayhem, but they added a few tweaks to make it better. The gameplay splits into two different types, combat and traversal. Combat more or less is the same as the last game, uh, you just have your normal attack button and your web attack that you can use to mix and match to get creative. This time around though, the spider sense dodge prompt is a lot more front and center than in Total Mayhem, meaning you have to watch for your spider sense to flash, then you can hit that button to dodge and counter. But since the button is front and center this time around, you can very easily hit it by mistake and kill the flow of your combat. And as a result, you can get hit by, well, any attack since you can't cancel the animation of dodging. 
Another difference this time around is that you don't have you all your moves by the get-go. You need to purchase them from the skill tree. You couldn't do that in Total Mayhem. You more or less could only upgrade your attack power, health, or XP bonus. You even have the same special move as in Total Mayhem. But this time, instead of allowing you to move around and cover more ground and enemies while the animation is taking place, you're just planning in one spot. While I am a little shitter shattered about that, I'd arguably say the super move in this game is a lot more devastating here than in Total Mayhem. So I, I can see why they felt the need to nerf your ability to move with it. It can still wreck house if you time it correctly and you're surrounded by enemies you just want to get off your back. And you can even make it to where the cooldown for it is near non-existent. Another thing that's changed is that the web meter no longer exists and as a result, your ability to fire webs and dodge won't be affected at all. Even if you do a super move, you can still web up enemies and most importantly, you can still fucking dodge. Now, uh, it it's not perfect. They removed your ability to jump in combat for some reason and there are some points that causes the dodge mechanic to just bug out. But that, that's more tailored to the boss and enemy section of this retrospective since there are only certain enemies that trigger this. Now let's move on to the traversal system which is just going to be the base mode you'll be in when you like spawn into the game. As I mentioned before, this game actually gives you a fully modeled, albeit inaccurate, New York City to fully swing around in. You'll have your basic jump button but if you hold on to it you fire a web line and start swinging. And if you want my honest opinion, the swing here is awesome! for a mobile title. Mind you, it's no Spider-Man 2, you're still swinging on air with the assistance of Uncle Ben's ghost for some reason, but considering it's a mobile game, I I'll, I'll give it a pass. Swinging actually feels like it has some sort of weight to it, you can easily gain speed and you actually feel the exaggerated swagger of a weight wrong Spider-Man. For comparison, here's the swinging in the PC and console supports of the game, there's no weight, no sense of momentum, and it just makes that little detail of your web sticking to nothing all the more egregious. Let that sink in. A mobile port showed up a AAA title with better web swinging. Couldn't be me. You can wall crawl by pushing yourself against any surface, but you can't wall run, and the crawl animation looks a little bit wonky. But hey, at least it looks like he's actually crawling to a wall and not doing advanced rock climbing. Eat that bitch! You can also web zip in this game, but only to street lights and certain corners of buildings. You don't even get much accomplishment from doing this, except maybe a cool perch pose that's only good for photos. You don't gain a speed verse if you jump just before the animation finishes, and I think that's a bit of a mixed opportunity to add more, you know, variety into web swinging. But aside from that, Traversal has a surprising amount of detail put into it. If you're swinging and happen to hit a building, you can just kind of run along it. Letting go while doing that can trigger a wall slide animation that you can either jump off or just go into a wall crawling animation. But if you're at the height of an arc and you hit a building and let go, you can slide up the building. If you make it to the top, you somersault off of it. Letting go of a swing will trigger certain animations depending on what direction the movement stick is going in. And falling for a few seconds will result in you going into a diving position. Running on top of a building and reaching the edge can result in Spider-Man automatically hopping off. And hell, you can even run along the ground in the middle of a swing if you're too close to it. Why don't Spider-Man games do this anymore? No mainline entry past Web of Shadows does this animation anymore. It's either you hit the ground or you swing. There's no middle ground. And another thing I want to point out is that quick time events do return in this game. But unlike Total Mayhem, where every other step felt like you ran into a quick time event, this game is way less intrusive when it comes to the usage of those. The story fucking sucks! Since this game is a movie tie-in, it does have to stay in line with the plot of the movie to some degree. Usually movie tie-in games try to recreate the movie. In Spider-Man's case, sometimes it means more will be added to the game so it won't feel like you're just playing a complete retread of the movie. Some games accomplish this better than others. For the console and PC port of The Amazing Spider-Man, it at least tried to do something different by having the plot of the game take place after the events of the main movie. Still horribly executed, but a gold star for trying. The mobile port took that idea, uh, threw it out the window, with the only understanding that the basic concept of Spider-Man is just starting out and Lizard is the main bad guy. The game starts out with Spider-Man saving some poor woman from being assaulted by, hey, wait a fucking minute. Better scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet, nigga. Ooh, that brother's floating in the air. 
We soon learned that this group was going to totally show her some respect as part of a gang that her boyfriend is involved in. And I kid you not, this game literally pulls for why do all the girls go for bad boys trope. Now why were those guys after you? It looked a bit more personal than a mugging. My boyfriend's gang, the Deadbeats, got hired to rob some banks later today by these guys called the Free Radicals. Robbery's one thing, but those radical guys are scary. They want to hurt a lot of people, and I have family in the city. I was going to the police, but those jerks caught me. The police will protect you, but a word of advice. If you haven't already, find a better boyfriend. Thugs don't suit you. Have you tried science, nerds? SHUT THE FUCK UP! Soon after you realize that a gang alliance has formed between the Dead Beats and the Free Radicals, who you learn have stolen some kind of research from Oscorp and have planted bombs all over the city to spread the anarchy of the Free Radicals or whatever shit. And after knocking them about, you soon realize that these canisters contain more than gunpowder and flint. Wait a minute! Oh, it hurts! It hurts! Ah! What? What are those things? Yep, uh, turns out it was a weaponized formula stolen from Dr. Kurt Connors that for some fucking reason turns people into giant man-eating lizards. And then the actual lizard shows up on the bridge, but instead of it being nighttime and having to save people, it's broad fucking daylight and we have to fight him. He gets aware after playing cat and mouse games and we realize that not only is the lizard Dr. Connors and we've been played for her as a sap, he also set up gas canisters around Central Park and we have to track down and disarm before they detonate. As the lizards escape, we find out too late that the final canister has been tampered with and it explodes in our face. I really don't know how that caught us off guard since our Spartans would have warned us about that, but go figure. We run off to hide by the ambush only to pass out. And when we come to, we have good news and bad news. Good news is, we haven't changed to a scaly freak. Bad news is that in the explosion, our web shooters have been damaged. This fucking blows so much. I can't swing. See, this is why I prefer organic webs to mechanical webs, because then shit like this doesn't happen. Like, imagine if this is Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man would never have this problem. You gotta fucking run around like a chump. I'm not Spider-Man, I'm Running Man. And I just realized, since I have no webs, I can't use my special move. Because the special move uses webs. And the web shoot button is fucking blocked out. So after doing a few missions and finally getting them fixed... This is seriously why organic webs are better, because he, he could have fixed it himself. She doesn't even have a fucking tool in her hand. Why is it sparking? She only fixed one web shooter! <laughs> Do it both! What the fuck? Huh? He smacked that building, by the way. It's funny as fuck. We have to go get the cure and disperse it, leading to disarming more fucking bombs! I am the bomb squad. And finally getting to the final battle, where we stop the lizard once and for all, and in the process, destroying the top of Oscorp and ending the nightmare. Yeah, like I mentioned before, the story fucking sucks. It doesn't even try to stay true to the original movie itself, and I'm not even sure if that was due to time constraints or if Game Loft really just didn't give a shit. But this game was only related to Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man by name, costume, and villain alone. Hell, Gwen only gets a passing mention, and that's only for one mission where you have to impress her as Spider-Man by acting like her tier 3 sub doing menial tasks to earn her favor, like parkouring over a certain number of cars or fucking running? What is this, kindergarten? Since when does a woman get impressed by how long a man can run? Hey, wait a minute! The story is just so dog shit, the only reason I stand to play it is for the gameplay. Oh, right. Let's not forget that the fact that the lizard is literally the only boss battle in this game. Yeah, you have your discount kingpin from the Dead Beats hideout mission, but that, does, that shit doesn't count. The lizard is the only villain you fight in this game for multiple boss battles. And speaking of bosses... Starting the game off, you have your low-level street thugs that will try to fist fight you, carry around baseball bats, pipes, pistols, and... Wait a second. Is that a fucking Molotov? To be fair, they actually do explode upon hitting the ground instead of blinking like a fucking strobe light before exploding. 
Uh, the next area of difficulties are these lizard minions that have a larger health pool and are stronger than the human enemies, but obviously. They show up halfway through the game, and I'm gonna be honest, these guys are complete pushovers. They're so easy to telegraph, and they don't even have any notable differences when it comes to fighting them, as opposed to the normal human enemies. They could have made it to where they're more difficult to web up, or they can break out of webs faster, like come on. Now, Oscorp soldiers, uh, these guys can go fuck themselves. The missile launcher guys aren't so bad, as a matter of fact, they're very easy to counter, because after they fire directly at you, they activate. Stop yeah. You can easily counter by pressing the spider sense dodge, but the problem lies when there are multiple enemies at the same time and you're trying to deal with missile enemies trying to shoot you. Oh, I'm sorry, are you already in the middle of a spider sense dodge from a different enemy? It's too damn bad! You will be stuck there until the timer for the prompt runs out. No, you can't just consecutively dodge missiles while you're dodging something else. And no, I don't know why they overlooked that. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why? Not, you stupid bastard. And half the time, the missiles will hit you even though it was quite literally out of your control. The aiming system for what you do when you do catch a missile is kind of wonky. You go into this wind-up animation where you can choose where the missile goes, but the problem is that it's not always guaranteed that the missile will go where you want it to. A prime example is during the mission titled Racing Rockets, where you have to destroy these pod things on a building using rockets that are being shot at you to prevent Connor's laugh from being destroyed and the sample you're looking for along with it. Now, that, that would be simple enough if it wasn't for the droves of enemies that show up and disrupt your targeting. I'm not fucking kidding. If an enemy is too close to you, it will automatically lock onto them and hit them instead of the thing I was actually trying to aim at. If the make matters worse, you also have to make sure you're close enough to what you're actually trying to target, or else the missile will just completely ignore the fact you were aiming at something and just blow up midair or hit the invisible wall that I can't get past. There's also these shotgun shield enemies that are somewhat hit scan. You can't directly hit them. Plus, for a period of time, they will lock onto you and you can't get behind them to hit them. There's no special prompt to take their shield away. All you can do is play ring around the fucking rosy until they fire their shotguns and stand there like morons so you can go take them from behind. Bro, what did you just say? I I just said take them from behind. Nah, bro, that's still gay. No, you're gay. You're he's gay. I'm not gay. He's gay. Let's not forget the baton enemies that for some fucking reason have invincibility turned on just because they're carrying around fucking sticks. And the worst parts about these enemies, besides the rocket men, you don't get a spider sense prompt to dodge any of them. That fucking brainlet thought it was a good idea to not give spider sense prompts to enemies that have a fucking invincibility state. They don't even have a good reason as to why the spider sense doesn't fucking work on them. They're just normal human soldiers. Why wouldn't the spider sense work on them? What was the reason? reason. What was the reason? reason? And it's bad enough that the boss battles are few and far in between, but it gets worse when you consider that uh, when it comes to the rogue gallery of villains, there be slim pickings. As I mentioned before, the only real supervillain in attendance is, well, You didn't forget this is a movie tie-in game, right? This will serve as a pretty decent reminder, uh, since legit nobody else in Spider-Man's Rogues Gallery shows up in this game. I think the closest we have is the Deadbeats gang leader who is just a great value kingpin. You whoop his ass and you proceed to never see him again. And it's not like Gameloft doesn't have the rights to the other Spider-Man villains, considering literally in the last game we went against six of them. I'm gonna assume it was due to restrictions of the parameters when the developers were given to work with, because it's not like Gameloft doesn't have the rights to these villains, as I've mentioned before. As a matter of fact, you can actually go collect samples that are direct references to them, pumpkin bombs from the Green Goblin and symbiote samples from Venom, which uh, funny enough are both villains in the next game, and boy do I have a lot to say about them, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now you're probably wondering, uh, how good are the lizard boss battles? Trash! I'd say sound design for this game is pretty decent. I'm assuming they brought back the composers of Total Mayhem to also work on this game, so I, I gotta give it to them. The impact of the punching feels good, the thorping sounds don't sound exact to the movie it's based on, but it, it, it's, it, it's pretty good. Now, before I go any further, now, uh, which Spider-Man voice actor is your favorite? 
Most people will argue between the three. Josh Keaton. Christopher Daniel Barnes. Get back here, Shocker! Shocker! You can't escape me! I'll chase you to the ends of the earth! And Yuri Laurenthal. Ah! Oh boy, will he, he, he become relevant later. Those are most likely the top answers you will hear, but what about this worst Spider-Man voice actor? The more ignorant will try to claim it's Drake Bell because of his, uh, legal problems, but more often than not, you will be pointed to the direction of this Spider-Man. Now where is Cage in his search party? Where is MJ? Where's Cage in his search party? Huh? The civilian volunteers! Mini Redhead, arm in a gas! Ah, you are no help! That APC! We got vehicles inbound! MJ! 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 I'm ah, so worried! Damn it. You best play it cool, man. But I'd like to play contrarian for a second and say that all of you are WRONG! Because holy shit, does Andrew Chaikin drop the ball in this voice. What the fuck happened here? He was pretty good in Total Mayhem, but here he's just horrible. What happened? When it comes to video games with a vocal protagonist, you might want to make sure their voice isn't a giant turnoff for the player. It also doesn't help that they gave him the absolute worst dialogue to work with. Hey little rascals, don't you guys know there are easier ways to get a ride in this city? But a word of advice, if you haven't already, find a better boyfriend. Thugs don't suit you. Have you tried science nerds? The clips he's given are just the worst. I understand you guys want to see the doctor, but you have to make an appointment first. And this will probably be one of the only times I complain about something like this, but this Spider-Man talks way too much. Police will protect you, but a word of advice, if you haven't already, find a better boyfriend. Thugs don't suit you. Have you tried science nerds? Given that I've known you guys for a while, I'm a little insulted you haven't invited me over before. But I guess I'll let it slide if you give up now. You shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! I will kill you! And then I will drag you out of fucking hell! And kill you again! Seriously, I, I hate this voice! You do not understand how much I want to take a shotgun to my fucking skull every time he speaks. Thankfully, Adam Harrington's Dr. Connors never indulges in any childish back and forth behavior, thus remaining the best voice in this game, hands down, because they didn't give him horrible dialogue. Welcome to my nightmare, Spider-Man. Are you prepared to become truly evolved? Stop calling me Connors! I'm the Lizard! And you, more than anyone should understand! You've used your gifts to do nothing but help people, and all they do is treat you like a criminal. It's the weakness of the human mind, Spider-Man. It's built to be irrational and cruel. Nothing is over until I decide it is. You can't stop evolution. You can't stop me. Now face your doom, Spider-Man. Also, fun fact, did you know Adam was the voice for almost all the other male NPCs in this game? Guy's got range, but his best performance was Connors and the Lizard. Stop calling me Con SHUT THE FUCK UP! The differences between Taz and Mobile and Total Mayhem is just night and day. Models and textures are a lot more detailed this time around, and Spider-Man has a full sled of moving fingers. And Spider-Man actually looks proportionally accurate as opposed to... <laughs> and I know, it's obviously modded to change Spider-Man's texture to Spider-Teen, like with Total Mayhem, but uh, let, let's take a look at the base texture for Spider-Man, shall we? Oh my goodness! Is it just me, or does this suit look infinitely better in every other media except the one it first debuted in. It just feels so weird. The movie licensed games have a better version of the suit. Modders of other Spider-Man games have made a better version of the suit. Spider-Man and PS4 has a better version of the suit. Hell, even cosplayers have a better version of this suit. Oh, by the way, like last time, if we can get 50 likes in this video, I'll link off to the Spider-Teen mod. Oh, hey, look at this. Notice anything? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The web isn't a poorly rendered flat texture. I mean, it's still a flat texture nonetheless, but at least it doesn't feel like I'm swinging on a dried out rope of sea. Yeah, and enjoy this while you can, because everything that glitters 
is not gold. The city's textures are pretty great and even have some semblance of shine on them to convey you looking at windows. Don't be fooled by the opening cutscene though, the, the game doesn't have ray tracing. Liar! But still, for a mobile title, this game looks, dare I say, amazing. Shut up, get out. Sadly though, there's no day to night cycle. You're a fraud, Spider-Man! <laughs> To be fair though, not even Spider-Man PS4 accomplished this, so... I really want to see this game with a nightshader because I feel like that would make this game even more better. Looks like Spider-Man 2 stays the undisputed king when it comes to details like this. Still, it, it just blows my mind how good this game looks. Aside from story mentions, you could also do these side activities around the city to earn experience points to level up your spider boy into a spider man. You can upgrade your strength, unlock more attack combos, up your health pool, resistance to damage, even increase the amount of experience points and money you get for completing a mission or random task. Something that Spider-Man PS4 would shamelessly steal six years later, and Spider-Man 2 would steal six years before. You absolute... Leech! But wake up, dear. We have unlockables to buy. First, we have the... What's your name, kid? The Human Spider. The Human Spider, that's it? That's the best you got? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest. I was completely caught off guard when I saw this suit wasn't unlockable. Now, the only perks you get is that you get bonus XP and bonus spiders when you defeat enemies and complete missions while wearing it. And the suit looks like a pretty faithful rendition of the human spider, uh, except speaking of spiders, the developers missed the fucking back logo. <laughs> Could it really have been that hard to draw the fucking back spider? Now, originally the textures weren't reachable, thus rendering this suit unmoddable, but it's come to my attention that the textures are moddable, and since uh, nobody's bothering to fix this issue, fine. I'll do it myself. There, much better. Now we can go hunt down Uncle Ben's Keller. <laughs> yeah, remember that shit never got resolved in the movie? By the way, if you're a stickler for detail like I am, the mod will be linked down below. No weird expectation required for it. But after collecting enough spiders, you can unlock the- You gotta be fucking kidding. The, oh my fucking- The black suit! What am I doing in the black suit? I, I hate this- SHUT THE FUCK UP! Yeah, we got the black suit as an unlockable again, but- this time it's the Spider-Man 3 black suit? I mean, don't get me wrong, this suit is fucking awesome. But question, uh, why does it give off a black smoke? Was he smoking the dark weed or some shit? This time around though, they don't carry over the extra moves from Total Mayhem that the other black suit had. It just has up damage and the only noticeable move that he has is the ground slam. It's really mostly a situational move if you really need to do crowd control. But I'd, I'd argue and say it's pretty fucking useless. Oh, I almost forgot. Early in the game, you get a story mission or you have to take pictures of Spider-Man in order to get class taught by a Pulitzer Prize winner. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. A photography class taught by a Pulitzer Prize winner. I submitted my portfolio today. Oh, I hope I get in. Good luck. I hear they're only letting in 10 people across the whole state. Still, I think my photography could get in. Wow. Maybe I'll submit a they few photos if I feel like it. There is still 24 hours left before the deadline. I wow, I don't believe it! My Spider-Man! So wow, a photo class taught by a Pulitzer Prize winner. I don't think any of Peter Parker's portraits of Aunt May are good enough to get me in. But maybe some sweet shots of Spider-Man can score me a spot in that class. That wasn't just a one-off thing. You still get random events around the city where you can take pictures for spiders and XP. And if you go into the shop, you can buy Peter's camera. Yeah, I think you know where this is going. You can legit pull out the camera at any point in the game and take photos. You can even save them to your device. Though I don't think this feature works very well with newer hardware. I've played this on a Galaxy Tab A, Motorola One Ace, and Blue Stacks. And it seems like the Galaxy Tab version of the game has no issue when it comes to rendering and saving the photos. 
Meanwhile, the Motorola version jacks up the rendering process of the photo where it comes out looking like TV static. And the Bluestacks version does render the photos, but they feel low quality, if that makes any sense. The photo mode is actually one of the best ideas that came out of the Amazing Spider-Man mobile games. Yes, I'm aware you could take photos in Spider-Man 3 as well as the Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, but you couldn't take pictures of Spider-Man himself. What? Yes, you heard that right. The games that are based on a character who legit sells pictures of himself for money doesn't allow you to take pictures of the guy who sells pictures of himself for money. You're a fraud, Spider-Man! Remember, ladies, only boys want pictures of your titties or your ass. You know what men really want? I want Spider-Man! This game earns a Spider-Man 2 out of 10. The, the GameCube version specifically, N not, not the PC port. We don't talk about the PC port. This game answered to a call some may have thought to be impossible. An open world Spider-Man mobile game that allows you to swing around freely, have fun combat. The only thing that's missing is an engaging story that expands on the media it's based upon, but uh, I, I think we, we can just let that slide. Just this once. The gameplay elements on display alone are just evidence of an untapped gold mine of infinite possibilities of Spider Man titles. I really don't think this game gets enough recognition for what it did at the time, and it just got shoved into the pile of mobile game trash on top of it being a tie in to one of the most lackluster Spider Man games ever made. Which, recently, that title has been taken by Fawful but Now, you're probably wondering, how do you get your hands on this game? Uh, well, it used to be on the App Store. Until it fucking wasn't. Yeah, similar to Total Mayhem, the game was taken down back in 2018. I'm guessing due to Gameloft's contract to license Spider-Man games running out. But, unlike Total Mayhem, I was actually able to get this one on the Play Store before they got taken down. So, this time around, I sadly don't have a reliable APK file that I can safely suggest to you. But hey, I'll still put in some work and effort to help you guys out. Well, I found one on OnlyGamers.xyz that I have found to be pretty trustworthy. So there's that. Once again, for those wondering about my accurate human spider fix, I'll leave a link to download down below. I know it literally just adds the missing back logo, but it, it means a lot to me that the suits are accurate because I am that much of a Raimi show. I also find it funny that the game included the black suit and the human spider suit from the Raimi movies, but it didn't include the red and blue suit. Huh, maybe the developers knew that players would be more inclined to use that one instead of the Tasm one red and blue. Oh well. This video took an unnecessary amount of time to finish because I apparently never grew out of my ADHD, but I still have fun playing this game over and over just to discover details I may have overlooked during my previous playthroughs. I mean, I guess that wraps up the Spider-Man mobile game retrospective. I mean, I'm honestly surprised how short it was. <laughs> Only two episodes. Oh well, no need to go any further, there's no reason to- You know, when I first started this retrospective series, I never really expected to be invested in these games as I actually became in these reviews. The last two retrospectives have taken us down memory lane with great gameplay but with somewhat mediocre stories. Spider-Man Total Mayhem was your standard linear beat-em-up game, has an extremely high level of replayability due to its collectibles scattered throughout the levels. The Amazing Spider-Man mobile was a step in the right direction with an open world for you to explore with fun combat and better easy looking on the eyes. Which leaves the final game in this retrospective, the sequel to the TASM Mobile, The Amazing Spider-Man Mobile 2. Does it improve upon the foundations of the last installments, or does it suffer the same fate as its console and PC counterparts did? Ah!
<laughs> remember in the last retrospectives and the conclusion segments, I gave them a grade that compares them to other, more better known Spider-Man titles. Total Mayhem got a grade of Spider-Man for the Dreamcast. Total Mayhem was given a grade of Spider-Man 2 for the GameCube, not the PC. But if I hold those in such high regard, where does that leave this one? Does it take elements from the previous games and build upon them while introducing new things? Is it fun to play? Will I ever find love again? Will my dad come back with the milk? <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man Mobile was released back in April of 2014, weeks before the movie actually came out. I don't think you'll be shocked to know that this game doesn't follow the plot of the movie at all. It's just another open world beat-em-up where you have New York City as your playground. You will come to understand why that's surprisingly a detriment to the game when I get to the... Just like the last installment, gameplay splits into two types, combat and traversal. Combat this time around receives a very big overhaul. Mind you, they are no longer using the Total Mayhem engine, so they had to make a brand new one, which means new combat moves and animations. There are quite a few good moves, but hitting enemies doesn't feel as impactful, and, and Spider-Man's moves aren't bad by any means. I mean, he's still a force we reckoned with, and they all exasperate that with the new moves they give him, but they just don't feel as fluid as they did in Total Mayhem or Taz and Mobile. How the fuck is that even possible? I do like the cool finisher moves they give Spider-Man, depending on what combo you set up, and it can be extremely devastating because they all deal an area of effect to other enemies around you. Once again, you have a dedicated fight button and web attack button which you can use to mix and match combos, but it's missing the flair from Taz and Mobile. But let's compare the two. Look at the combat and combos in comparison. I really miss the jump off move from Taz and Mobile where you press the web button in the middle of a combo. Yeah, it's present here, but it's not as good, it just feels stiff. Just like the last game, you can complete side missions and side tasks in order to get spider points to level up your spider boy into a spider man. Spider points are the universal currency outside of using real money, but uh, I'll, I'll get to that later. I just feel like combat should have had a little more time in the oven. But hey, there are a few nice things to it. For example, I do like the finisher moves that were given. And if you stun an enemy to the point to where they're seeing actual stars, you can web them up to get them to stay down like an Ultimate Spider-Man. I was pleasantly surprised to see that feature present in this game. There also will be times where during a fight, if you hit a certain combo on an enemy, Spider-Man will kick them to the ground and web them up. That is actually pretty cool. But something about this combat system is bugging me. I I'm having trouble figuring out what is it. Wait a minute. Where are my air combos? That's why combat feels so stiff. You're glued to the ground every time you start an encounter. You can't uppercut enemies in the air and jump to juggle them to death. Now, let's get to web swinging, where my... <laughs> if you thought I was bitching here, you ain't seen nothing yet. I know I keep doing this in the section comparing the game to its predecessors, but bear with me, it's almost over. Let's take a look at Total Mayhem, and more importantly, Taz Mobile. In Total Mayhem, you don't really web swing at all, at least not freely. You could do a swing that counted as a double jump, and there were scripted swinging segments that served as a transition for the next area to load in, but since it's not how you really get around the city primarily, since it's not an open world, I'm not gonna count it. Now, Taz Mobile, on the other hand, it had a sprawling open world you could freely swing around in. The swinging was actually fun to do and jam-packed with a surprising amount of detail to add flair to the swinging. Detail I honestly wouldn't have expected a mobile game of all things to have. With that being said, you would expect that the developers behind Taz Mobile 2 would try to look at the swinging and do something groundbreaking. Ta, <laughs> game loft, you sly dogs. You may have lacked in the combat section of this, but you must have made some good changes to the web swinging, right? <laughs> you made web swinging more fun this time around, right? Right? Please, please just hear me out, please! Ah! What? How? How the? Why, why the fuck? What did you do to the web swinging? Ah! It's so fucking awful! 
once again, the webs are sticking to the clouds, and that's not really the issue here. I can live with that. This is a mobile game. But there's no weight, no sense of momentum at all, absolutely no style. <laughs> you swing at the exact same speed, no matter what. Compared to swinging in Tasm 1, you actually felt like you were swinging. Look at the web! Yes, it's sticking to the sky, but depending on what direction you're moving in, the web will be shot at an angle! Sometimes, it will be relatively close to a building, so you feel like you are actually swinging off of something physical. But no matter what direction you're going in, in this game, the web will shoot straight up! I want these webs to shoot relatively close to buildings and have some sort of weight and speed to it. The webs will shoot straight up no matter what, take it or leave it. In speed? Oh my god, it feels so sluggish! It's like Spider-Man just ate one too many pizzas and he's just struggling on his webs! You go to the same constant speed no matter what and it feels like your momentum just stops when you let go to shoot out another web. In Towson Mobile, I could slip through the city no problem! Oh, remember those nice animated details I pointed out in Towson Mobile retrospective? Yeah, a lot of those details have been completely scrapped. Huh? Remember when you got too close to the ground and you'd run along it to maintain your swing? Y yeah, that's gone. Remember when you let go of a swing and you could slide on buildings like you were covered in skillet grease? Gone! The little wall run th that's still present is actually nice. They completely removed web zipping. You could only web zip onto a fucking helicopter that will be traveling around the city. Yeah, this little shit purse point, that's all you get! Fuck you! The only welcome addition is that in place of the wall slide and wall crawl, we get the wall run, something that was sorely missing in Tazm Mobile. But the weird thing about it though, is that it just completely takes over the wall crawling. As you can see here, I'm just trying to do wall crawling, but it automatically goes into wall running. There's no threshold where I could just crawl on the wall, it will automatically go into wall running once I start the crawl. Just let me crawl, bro! You also get this web pull where you just defy all logic whatsoever. I guess God himself is just yanking on those webs for him. I, I don't like this move. This move is just useless. The move is for if somebody just absolutely does not give a shit and just wants to get height. That That's it. Why couldn't you just build upon what Tazzle Mobile did? What is actually wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? FUCKING SHIT! WHAT'S WRONG WITH YOU?! Okay, uh, I think I got the hatred out of my system. What's next on the lit? Oh no. Oh my god! The story is absolutely bonkers, and it makes no fucking sense. It's honestly crazy how much shit goes on in this game. Nearly on par with the movie itself. The game is split up into eight chapters. And you're not gonna believe where chapter one ends up. The game starts with Spider-Man. Please don't be saving a wolf for being assaulted. Please don't be saving a wolf for being assaulted. Oh look, a party for me to crash. I hope they don't have an armed maniac only policy. Oh, thank God. The game starts out business as usual, stopping a gang and getting attacked by- What the fuck?! <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there actually is aerial combat in this game. Uh, it's very janky, but hey, <laughs> cold, cold, cold start for trying. And after not very successfully stopping an Oscorp truck due to one of its contents flying out, we realize that gangs have been pretty much enroaching upon Oscorp Tep and stealing their ship. By the way, there was more on that truck, and I'm gonna assume the truck crashed after Spidey jumped off. Keep that in mind, it will make sense later. The game is actually structured differently than the last, so more so how it goes into the old Spider-Man games to where you have to do side activities in order to be able to progress in the story. Sometimes side missions will actually have something to do with the story, other missions just serve as filler stuff to do until the story missions pop back up. And once that progress bar fills up, you're attacked by another other than SONIC THE FUCKING HEDGEHOG! SONIC YOU SON OF A BITCH, I'M GONNA PUT YOUR ASS IN THE GROUND! Obviously I'm joking, it's Electro. Out of every iteration of Webb's Electro I've seen, 
this one's my favorite, actually. Remember when I said earlier to keep in mind what happened to that truck he was trying to stop? Well, Max here was apparently near the accident it caused, and it was, and he was affected by what the truck dropped. Actually, feels like he has a reason to be angry at Spider-Man due to recklessness. Say it's way better than. It's goofy as fuck, but hey, it, that is kind of catchy. Find him in Times Square, but just like the console point of the game, you finish him off at the top of a skyscraper. Now, let's move on. We're trying to figure out who the fuck is supplying these games with weapons, and now we have to track them down. Oh, hey, Black Cat. That's a fucking Black Cat? Oh, yeah, Black Cat's in this game, just like she's in the console version. She's also helping us track down who's responsible for handing over these powerful weapons to the gangs. Oh, speaking of the devil, oh, my God, it's Paul Giamatti. <laughs> I wanted to wait until I got to the graphics section, but I, I really can't ignore this. Why does this model texture look so scuffed? After capturing him, you have to follow a lead from the Black Hat to protect an Oscorp convoy from gangs. Need I mention, this is a mission ripped straight from the first game, where you have to protect Dr. Connor's ambulance from thugs so he can reach the hospital. But hey, it turns out it was a trick! We are ambushed by the, the, the fucking Green Goblin! What the fuck? I actually do like the way he's portrayed in this game as well. He wants to kill Spider-Man not only for research purposes, but also because he keeps getting in his way with the gangs. And Thankfully, taking out that god-awful plot of Harry dying from a genetic disease and begging Peter for Spider-Man's blood, they adapted this into the console game, and, and ho holy shit, they managed to make him look more like a meth addict in this game than in the actual fucking movie. How, how the fuck did you do that? Sadly, they had to keep this god-awful goblin form, most likely due to contractual obligations, but hey, they worked with what they had. After surviving a really intense battle and giving a stern spanking to the black cat over fucking us over, we're off to solve the mystery of the gang war. At this point in the game, we figure out that Craven the Hunter is head of the Russian gang, and the leader of the Mafia is Hammerhead. What the, what the, what the, what the fuck are they doing in this game? I know Craven's in the console version, but he has a way different role there than here. Basically tracking down leads until we have to take them head on for a boss fight. And as a result, both get away because Spider-Man decides the guy in the fucking business suit is more important than the literal fucking mercenaries he just dealt with. This battle is not over. It is on hiatus. Until next time, Spider. I hate letting them go. But I have to find Mencken before he escapes again. Fuck! God damn it! And then he gets. Chapter 4 is basically a missing person case where we have to figure out what the hell happened to Eddie Brock. And at the same time, we have to figure out a mystery of a goddamn monster running around the sea wearing a cost black costume that looks similar to yours. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. What's cool about this chapter is that the majority of the side missions actually have something to do with the chapter this time around. Instead of mundane busy work, you start out asking people close to Eddie when they last saw him. Then it gets overtaken by the mystery figure that starts infecting gang members with a plot to take over the city with... Wait a fucking minute. England, now what? Spidey, whoever's behind all this, got symbiotes. Hey, hang on a second, I have a legitimate question. How many times has Spider-Man games done this whole symbiote takeover idea? Well, let's run them down. It first happened in Spider-Man 2000, most famous case was Spider-Man Web of Shadows, then there was Friend or Foe, then there was Shattered Dimensions, then there was Total Mayhem, then there was The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the console version, and finally, this game. If I had a dollar for every time this happened, I'd buy myself a decently priced sandwich. Uh, okay, a slightly overpriced sandwich, but you get my point. 
kind of weird how this plot has happened so many times, and I will go into some more detail of it if I ever make my own video on it, especially if it happens in Spider-Man 2 coming out later this year, since Venom will be one of the main antagonists. You fight Venom and realize that Eddie is trapped inside the suit. Due to him snooping around Oscorp, he gets captured and the symbiote is forced onto him as punishment for trying to expose them. I'm gonna be honest, I really don't like this version of Venom. Eddie has no ill will towards Spider-Man in this game. If anything, he's just an unwelcome ally. The game just makes him an unwilling host to the symbiote that attacks Spider-Man for no reason whatsoever. His boss fight is... it's alright, I guess. But I'll get into more about this Venom later. After that, you're now back to trying to retrace Eddie's steps and exposing Oscorp for double dipping in the weapons market leading us to fighting the goblin again? What? Then Electro gets released and you have to go fight him again? And the way the fight ends, just... It just, just watch what happens. Spider-Man! You won't ruin my plans this time, Spider-Man! I've learned a lot since the last time we met! I'm lightning incarnate! Wow, did you come up with that, or was it the last date you had? You dare mock me! Time to fry, webhead! Like this, I'm too powerful. I'm, I'm... And then you have to fight the rhino, and then the game finally ends. Oh, thank fuck. The game story sucks. I, I don't. I, do I really need to explain it any further? It looks like Gameloft took my advice from the last time and decided to give this game a lot more meat for the player to chew on. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that Black Cat was in this game, and it was pretty much in line with who she usually is. But everyone else is a hit or miss. Goblin is passable, Electro is fine, Venom fucking sucks, Rhino fucking sucks, Craven and Hammerhack don't even get any development, so we don't even know why they're doing this. Spider Man is. Well, he's Spider-Man. What do you expect? So next on the list is... Oh dear fucking lord, just in my suffering now. Enemies are plentiful, but they're just reskins of each other. Come on, guys. You're not gonna make me talk about these in detail, right? Oh, okay, chill. So basically, you start out with your usual thugs, but this time around, gun enemies aren't present. At least not at this point in the game. Just guys with fists and dual machetes. Early on, you're introduced to the Oscorp drone enemies where you actually have air, air combat. The air combat is just as stiff as normal combat, and I, I really don't want to talk about- oh, Okay, I'll talk, I'll talk! The animations are extremely stiff, and the web lines don't even connect on some of them. Oh, the web lines, dear fucking lord. So, uh, what, what about the pause battles? <laughs> are they any better? All of these boss battles suck ass! Every single one of them! Every single one of them! I can play garbage! Not even Venom could save this one! The issue with this game is that it actually makes the fatal mistake of utilizing touchscreen quick time events. And I don't know if I'm just getting old, but dear fucking lord, I hate these so much because I'm too slow to react to the swipes! Speaking of being slow, during the Venom boss battle, you have to you have this like timer to stop Venom from affecting civilians, but the game never actually tells you how to do it. So, while I'm fighting for my life against this big black monster, realistically, his name should be changed to fucking Tyrese. I also have to deal with my anxiety spiking due to that fucking bar going down. It's not like you have to deal with the symbiote infected enemies after the fact, they just die. That's it. Now that I think about it, what the fuck was Venom's motivation here? Literally every other boss battle 
has something to do with the bad guy wanting to control the city. Electro was he had a personal vendetta against Spider-Man because of what happens towards the beginning of the game. Venom literally has no reason to want to kill Spider-Man or try to take over the city with symbiotes. A as a matter of fact, why does he even remotely look like Spider-Man? From the in-game dialogue and from what I can deduce, Spider-Man has never worn the black suit within the canon of the game's story, despite it being an unlockable costume. So that means Venom's just decided to copy Spider-Man for no good reason and decided to terrorize the city. And what's funny about this is that if you played the console or PC port of the game, you actually have to deal with Carnage. So, so I guess that's the reason why the mobile port decided to include Venom. But he, he literally has no rhyme or reason to be here. Why are you here? And since I'm on a Venom tangent, let, let's discuss the elephant in the room, Venom's design. Now, this may seem like the average classic Venom with spider logos that don't connect to each other for some fucking reason, but would you believe me if I told you this wasn't what Venom originally looked like on launch? He looked like this! For which those who have a keen eye, this is more reminiscent of his appearance in Spider-Man 3, Venom's first live-action appearance. Listen, people can slander this design all they want, but I love this design and I wish Venom looked like this more often. That's my hot take of the day. Yeah, sound design is fine. I'm guessing they got different composers for this game because when I hear the music, it definitely does sound something fitting to The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Sound effects are serviceable, but nothing to write home about. But I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised as to who Spidey's voice actor this time around is. Oh look, a party for me to crash. I hope they don't have an armed maniac only policy. That's right, it's Yuri Lorenthal! They actually decided to pull in an A-lister for this installment, and he brings us all, being the biggest standout voice in the cast, considering everything that happens later for him. But yeah, surprisingly I don't have that much to say about sound design this time around. Though, I will point out, some of the in-game roaming dialogue that Yuri says is the exact same in-game roaming dialogue you'll get from Tasm 1 Mobile, so I find it funny they had him re-record those lines. <laughs> that actually is funny. But yeah, I don't really have that much to say about sound design, which means next I should get into <laughs> Graphics in this game I consider to be a double-edged sword. On one hand, they are kind of a step up from Tasm Mobile 1, but, eh, this time around, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the look of the city. Oscorp was changed due to the fact that it exploded in the last game, so at least there's some level of continuity present. Of course, this is a movie tie-in, so Spidey and the other characters that was present in the movies are gonna have to be present here as well. I sincerely think the person that got it the worst was Paul Giamatti's Alexi, who becomes Rhino at the end of the game, as well as the actual movie. You can plainly see they were trying to model his likeness into the game, but could only get as far as this egghead and extremely poorly rendered texture. And, uh, speaking of poorly rendered textures, remember when I gave shit to Total Mayhem for the webline being poorly rendered? At least there, it fell in line with the style of everything else, and I can give it a pass considering the year the game came out. And remember when I gave points to Tazza Mobile 1 for the web actually looking good, despite being a flat texture, and being the correct size so it doesn't look out of place when you're swinging about? So, uh, yeah, uh, what, what the fuck happened here? Why is the web line so fat, and why is it so poorly rendered? Everyone's costumes looks fine, except for Spider-Man himself. I'm about to be that guy again, but this rendition of Tazm 2's suit is downright disrespectful. Because whose fucking bright idea was it to segment the fucking back logo like it was done in Tesla Mobile 1? That suit looks way better than this one does here. His blue is too bright, his red is too bright, his blue is way too bright, his suit has a really ugly orangey red. And yes, I'm gonna be that guy. And if you've noticed, I haven't gone out of the way to force somebody to make a skin mod of Spider Teen for this game. That's because literally nobody has bothered to create mods for this game. Now, it could just be very well due to the fact this game is incredibly difficult to mod, but I'm more inclined to believe this game sucks so hard that nobody 
is bothering to waste their talents on this shit. But what's funny is that all the other alternate costumes look way better. Which is what I will be getting into more in the... Throughout the game, there are various collectibles you can find. But let's be real, you don't give a shit about these. You just want the alternate costumes, you fucking greedy bastard. And this game actually has that in space. Now, of course, it's not Marvel Spider-Man levels of wardrobing, but there is a pretty neat assortment of alternate suits. We have Doc Ock, but not really. Tribes. Shocker! The Other. Diet Anti-Venom. Iron Man at Home. And finally... Oh, my lucky stars! The Negro! Did you know people were actually trying to argue whether or not it's racist for Peter to be wearing Miles' costume as an ultimate suit? It's, it's not. It's just a fucking ultimate costume. I'll need to chill. These costumes vary in terms of damage output, resistance to damage, health boost. Overall, the best suit of the game being the Iron Spider with near-perfect stats. Now, the way you can unlock these costumes originally was by getting costume tokens at the end of each chapter or level. They just get randomly gifted to you. Or, you, you can just do how I did it and get a file that hacks into the game and unlocks every suit and gives me borderline infinite money. There actually was a way to go fight the villains again, but, uh, yeah, you can't do that anymore. There used to be a leaderboard for you can complete. You could compete for a high score, but that's offline due to game off cutting services for the game. And as a result, you originally couldn't even go as far as to access the suits or buy potions. Hell, you couldn't even use the potions the game gave you. That being said, uh, I think it's time for put me out of my misery and end this review with... After the thrills that Total Mayhem and Tiles of Mobile threw at me, to the point to where, to this day, I will still vehemently sing the praises of those games. This game... Th this game? It fucking sucks! Every sense of enjoyment I had from the previous game was just completely snatched away from it the second I booted this game up. Remember that trailer bit where I killed myself because the game wouldn't load? That wasn't just done for a comedic bit. That actually happens to you if you try to revisit the game if you basically bought it and downloaded it from the Play Store. Legitimately. That happened to me when I legitimately bought the game back when it was still in the store. And years later, it will do that to you for, like, what? Why? There's this weird glitch that happens where the game gets stuck on 45% loading and it will stay that way. Part of this is due to the fact that online support of this game was axed, and as a result, it affected a lot of the game's functionality, as I mentioned before for the store. This game was made around the time microtransactions were on the rise, and one of the easiest places to insert microtransactions, cheap ones at that, were in mobile games. It's actually part of one of the earlier missions where you have to visit the online store, which you can't do because at this point in the game's lifespan, it's been shut down, and if you earn potions through completing chapters, you can't use those, because for some reason, it's tied to that online store. Before I got to the modded files of the game, I was actually softlocked in the Venom boss battle and Craven slash Hammerhead boss battle. I was so retarded in my leveling up process, and due to my aforementioned issue to react to swipe quick time events, I would get my ass shredded in the final stretch of boss battles. It was fucking asinine. But back to the... 45% issue, that killed my entire drive for doing this review, and it is one of the leading factors as to why it took so long for me to do it. It was taking me days upon weeks to figure out what was causing this issue to happen, until one day I decided to look at my game files. And it turns out, from the official download of this game, THERE WERE SOME FILES MISSING! If you made it this far into the video and, <laughs> and for some reason you want to play, you want to play this game, I'll probably make a tutorial on how to get this game to actually work properly. But 9 times out of 10, I'm not doing that. Because why would I want somebody to go through the pain and suffering that I just had to deal with playing this fucking game? 
It's bad enough that originally for the base game, you couldn't play it offline. It literally required you to be connected to the internet in order to play. Taz and Mobile and Total Mayhem do not have these issues, but for some reason, this game does. And even after getting past those issues, the game was so fucking boring to play. It was so bad that I kept falling asleep in the middle of playing the game. And in my lost recordings, there would be periods of time where I would just pass out. Because instead of the game giving you dopamine as a reward for your playthrough experience, it fucking clobbers you with melatonin for daring you to think about trying to enjoy this dog shit waste of storage. Not to mention the times that the game would be fucking broken. There are times where you're swinging around, and if you dive in certain areas of the city, the, the camera would just tear off to the side of the screen, and where you can't see Spider-Man or anything else. And remember that goblin boss battle? The ending cutscene animation is fucking missing! The sound is definitely there, but the cutscene that actually plays is literally the cutscene that happens before the boss battle starts. How, how, how does that shit happen? And not to mention, there's a little detail that just peeves the fuck out of me. The unlockable costumes, yeah, those don't show up in cutscenes. Why? What? Why? What the fuck is wrong? Why would you not do that? Why? <laughs> this game is garbage! It belongs in the trash! I don't need a Popeye's biscuit without anything to wash it down. I've seen so many people claim they have fond memories of this game, but how? How can anybody enjoy the snooze fest? Fuck this game. <sighs> so it's finally over, huh? I started this adventure nearly a year ago because I felt like these games were overlooked due to the fact that they're mobile games. And as a dedicated Spider-Man fan and avid gamer, I definitely, I can see why. But that doesn't mean that companies that build mobile games should just give up and get lazy in doing mobile games of our favorite characters. Stop with the gacha game elements that makes my ADHD give me a fucking aneurysm. Stop adding ludicrous microtransactions that are so egregious they become borderline pay to win tactics. And for fuck's sake, stop making these lazy ass turn based RPG games put some fucking effort into making an actual good game! Mar Marvel Future Revolution was actually a game I was looking forward to playing, but the combat just feels extremely repetitive, and the fact that there's an autoplay feature, the mere fact, the mere suggestion that you can auto play through the game it just turned me off from wanting to continue to play the game <laughs> there used to be a free flow combat Jojo's Bizarre Adventure mobile game uh, until Bandit decided hmm, yeah you know the best part that makes our mobile game playable yeah let's take that out and turn into a turn based RPG that certainly won't tank our game at all I am so fucking sick of turn-based RPGs for characters that just do not fit that genre at all. If I want to play a turn-based RPG, I will go play Pokemon or fucking Fire Emblem or some shit. Stop being lazy and make your games fun! I was looking forward to like an Attack on Titan mobile game, and the graphics look pretty decent, until I figured out, IT'S A FUCKING TURN-BASED RPG! And then, there was another JoJo's Bizarre Adventure mobile game that was coming out last year that I was about to get because I'm like, huh, they must have decided to actually do a fighting game with free-flowing combat like a Diamond like Diamond Records originally had. It was a fucking turn-based RPG! Are you fuckers allergic to fun or something? Make mobile games fun again, please! You! You right there, watching this video! If you made this part of the video, type in the comics, hashtag, make mobile games fun again. And it's funny that Apex Legend Mobile was released last year, and even though it's a slightly condensed version of the console and PC port, I still had fun with the game. And it really broke my heart when it was announced that the game would be shutting down in May. Which mostly will be around the time this video is coming out. Call of Duty Mobile is also a really fun mobile get mobile port of a high quality console PC port. The zombies mood 
The zombies mode is dog shit though, but you know, I digress. I want mobile game developers to go back to taking risks with their game and making them fun, not weird corporate mandated schlop pumped full of gotcha elements in microtransaction that causes my ADHD to give me a brain hemorrhage. That's one of the reasons why I stopped playing the My Hero Academia Strongest Hero game. Yes, the hub world is fun to navigate, along with the combat and gameplay being borderline perfectly solid, but the gotcha elements of maintaining your base in the cheapified version of these characters hanging out is fucking unnecessary! Equipping different gear onto the character, yeah, that's an interesting concept that's been done many times before, but here, like other games before it, it's executed poorly. And again, with Honkai Impact, a game that I love to death, but the gacha elements just are not doing it for me. But, you know what? That's enough of my ramblings. What did you think of the review? Do you think I'm being too harsh in this game? Comment down below what you think your favorite part of the video is. And, you know, if you're new to the, this channel, subscribe. And if you do love this game... You're completely valid. I respect your opinion. Don't let me, some random nigga on the internet, ruin your fun. And ladies and gentlemen, we made it. We finally hit 3k subs, but I've also been able to finally get a proper gaming PC with your guys' help. So, I, I want to briefly thank those who donated personally because they, they still contribute to the cause. Ali, a fellow content creator and actual real life friend of mine, Crippled Crab, Bell Del I don't know how to fucking say that. Sh that Bark Del I don't I don't know I don't know if you're watching this video, Bell, but I have no fucking clue how to say your name without having a stroke in the process. Justin Snyder, Yavin, and finally an anonymous donor who cashed out for me at three hundred dollars. Yeah, I, I don't know where this shit came from. And yeah, I know, that's a short as fuck list, but these guys did contribute, so I think it would just be pretty douchey not to mention them. And you know what? I want to give a special thanks to you, dear viewer. The time you give my content also contributed to the ever-expanding growth of my channel, and actually contributing to my very first Google AdSense check that I used to get this PC. Now I can do more content that I've been itching to do for a very long time, as evidenced by my Spider-Man 2 video. And I will see you guys in the next one. See ya!